Good morning, Knights. Welcome back to the studio. In this week's episode, we put our teachers to the test with some trivia, learn more about the Sign Language Club, and do some golf cart karaoke with one of our favorite staff members. Get ready for an all-new episode of the studio right now. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Studio HHS. I'm Taylor Knuchel. And I'm Vanessa Venjohn. Let's get this show started off by checking up with some of our English and math teachers to find out how much they know about the opposing subject. Ashton and Campbell have the story. All around Gilbert, our nights are hunkering down in bedrooms, cafes, and libraries in order to study for the SATs. However, this SAT season, students won't be the only ones stressing over their test scores. We asked two math teachers and two English teachers to tackle the other subject on a mock SAT quiz. Oh, God. Wow, I can't even imagine how it would be any of those. <laughs> Should we do process elimination? That worked for us last time. I'm starting to get confused. I don't know what the heck they're talking about, man. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is like <laughs> times times the square root of one, negative one, which is one. The, the questions that I read, I have no <laughs> idea where they came from. <laughs> they don't seem to relate to this at all. Pay around the cent. Text messages <laughs> each hour for four hours. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with you. 32, we're going to guess. B. 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 Yes! Yay. Okay. 33. 33 A. Yes! Yeah. I knew we should have gone high. <laughs> well, you're already giving yourself points. You already know it's right. We're going to say <laughs> 35 D. D. Oh! oh. what I think. 38. We say C. C. Yes. Yay. After the test was over, we scored the results. And with a score of 12 out of 16, we have a winner, or rather two. Both the math and English teams tied. Congrats. We are the champions. <laughs> My friends. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> I could take their job. I could teach math. Ugh, God, that sounds awful. We won! For the studio, this is Campbell and Ashton, signing out. Our band in Winterguard is hosting their annual Winterfest once again. Come join them on December 8th at 6 p.m. in the Power Ranch Clubhouse. There will be plenty of entertainment and tons of food. Be sure to head over there. Attention all softball players. If you are planning to try out for softball in the spring, we are currently holding winter workouts on Mondays and Wednesdays from 6 to 7.30 starting on December 3rd. All levels are welcome to participate. Hey Vanessa, have you heard of Octane Raceway? Like the go-karting place out in Scottsdale? Yeah, it seems like a fun time, so Nick and Ethan took a trip out there to find out more. Nick and I heard Octane Raceway has some fast carts, so we got a closer look to see what's under the hood. We don't have like, um, we don't have a track that, uh, goes up and down too much to slow down your speed. So we change uh, the track up every now and then. Sometimes we get a wider turn out there, it might be more safer, it might give slower times. Sometimes it just changes it up. I love it when you can just go as fast as you want, basically. And when you're turning and you kind of skid, that's the best part. You feel a little bit of a rush doing it. We uh, make our tracks we customize them so that you do have to think about, you know, when I'm gonna hit the brakes. And you do need to hit your brakes, you can't just gas it all out. Go-karts are the main event, but there are more awesome things to do as well. Um, it had a pretty decent sized arcade, that's one of the things that I noticed. So there is, I think there's eight tops, VRs in the world. We're really up to date, this is full wireless. There's one in Australia, one in Japan, one at uh, the MGM in Vegas, and there's obviously one here in Scottsdale. 
and it's just, I don't know, it's something, it's something you can kind of experience and you can tell your friends. And even if you were to go on YouTube and look up one of the videos, your friends might be jealous, you know, because you got to do it and someone they didn't. Go to Octane and hit the track anytime. This is Ethan Jones and Nick Gooch reporting for the studio. This past Tuesday, girls and boys soccer played Sierra Linda. The girls won 15-2 and the boys fell short 2-0. Both teams play tonight. Make sure to come out and cheer them on. Our nation's schools are full of students who possess the desire to go to college and the willingness to work hard, but many of them are not truly prepared for the college and career path ahead of them. The ADVIT program on our campus is designed to help students succeed on their road to college and career success. We recently sat down with Ms. Matthew to find out what attending college did for her. I think it did a few things. It gave me um, some time to figure out what I really was good at and learn that I was able to do things I didn't think I was able to do and that maybe what I thought I wanted to do wasn't really what I wanted to do. But it also helped me refine the skills that I knew that I had and um, learn about myself as sort of a part of the broader community. It gave me a way out of my hometown, which was what I was hoping for. And um, it helped broaden my understanding of the world and how I was going to interact in it. Sign Language Club has just begun this year at Higley. Lily wanted to bring more attention to this club for students' knowledge, so let's take a look. Hi, my name is A-R-W-E-N. I did it perfectly! Sign Language Club is a new club at Hickley this year that's quite different from other clubs around campus. I talked to some students and their club sponsor to hear what the club is like. I joined Sign Language Club because one of my friends can't speak, so we'd fingerspell. This is fingerspell and sign language. So we would practice signing and fingerspelling. Since I have to um, use some sign language at my own house, it's nice to come here and like not only help out others, but also learn some new of my own. So we've, I feel like we've started bonding as a club, getting to know one another, getting to know each other's personalities and having those humorous moments. A normal meeting for the club is like everybody hanging out and like everybody learning new signs together. A normal meeting for the club would have to be sitting down and then discussing our new terms for sign language, such as Hello, how are you? For each club meeting, I Google, and that, that's about that. I ask the kids what they want to learn, so then I'll go and Google, Google. How do you sign that? The club members also told me about their favorite signs that they've learned. My favorite sign that I've learned in the club is slower. Sign slower, because if I don't know what people are saying, then I have to tell them to sign slower. Snake because it's like the snake bangs and it's coming out at you. It's nice to meet you. Raised eyebrows, where if you're asking a question, it's lowered eyebrows. And it's all about your eyes and your facial expressions. And if you're making a question like what or who. My favorite thing about signing is probably um, like the more you learn it, the quicker you can do it, and then it makes it more fun. I think it's a language everybody should know at least a little bit of because there is that population in the world. Sign Language Club meets in room 508 every Wednesday. Be sure to check it out. This is Lily Barstow reporting for the studio. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Pole vaulting is unlike any other track and field sport that students can participate in. Our team has already begun practicing before the season begins and is looking for new members. Karsten and I caught up with some of the teammates as well as the coach to ask them why they should join. Pole vaulting is a sport at Higley High School that has been a part of the track program for years. Karsten and I caught up with some of the team members and the coach to learn more. Pole vaulting is a field event in track and you pretty much run with your pole in your hands, catapult yourself over a bar and see how high you can get. Well, it's actually really fun. Like if you like stuff like 
jumping high and doing all that. I don't know, running fast and it's really good because it doesn't require like a ton of energy. You just kind of run really fast, jump really high, fall and then it's kind of done. Um, you're gonna have bad days all the time. I just had one the other day or before Thanksgiving break and today is like a really good day. So you're gonna have bad days and good days. You just gotta push through, keep going. We asked the team members for some advice for the new students who are interested in joining or are planning on joining this upcoming season and what the best part about this unique sport is. If students want to join track, they will have a lot of things to look forward to. We plan on going to California for one of our meets, maybe even Texas. Um, practices are super fun. My favorite part is when you're like in the middle of the air and you're coming back and it's like you just let go. When you see you cleared it, it's a good feeling. Yeah. The advice that I would give is to get serious about it and dedicate yourself because like doing it halfway, you're not really going to get anywhere, but if you really give 100% every practice and do all that you can, you're going to do a lot better a lot quicker. So advice I would give to anybody that wants to pole vault is work on your core strength and don't give up because even if it seems really difficult and it's really scary, you just have to get over it. That's a pole vault joke because in the end, it's super rewarding to PR and it's super fun. Make sure to come out for tryouts coming this February. They need tons of new members and anyone is welcome to join. This is Taylor and Karsten reporting for the studio. Head out to Desert Mountain High School this Saturday, December 1st, to support your Varsity Spirit Line cheer and palm teams as they compete for a spot in the AIA State Championships. Palm performs at 8.25 a.m., cheer at 10.05 a.m., and All Girls Stump performs at 11.15 a.m. The Knight Writers Club members are doing pre-writes for their new story ideas. They meet every Monday and Thursday after school in room 526. Join soon before the preparation ends. ROTC has an upcoming competition on December 1st. They will be doing armed and unarmed drills against other schools. Nadia went out and got a better idea about this competition. Hey. Our Higley ROTC class is preparing for their first drill meet of the year. What many of you may not know is that the class is more than just wearing a uniform. So the drill team is our more militaristic program at uh, ROTC. It's more hands-on learning as of marching, not just uh, paperwork and textbooks. Cadet Captain Brewer is one of the members in the class who helps to guide the students through the intense drill routines. Practicing two hours a day during zero and seventh hour, they prepare for their drill meet this coming December. Right, our first one is at Hamilton High School, Desert Talon. It's pretty stressful on the way there. You're studying our knowledge questions, and then once you start marching, everything's got to be just perfect. you got to listen to the commander's voice, or if you are the commander, you have to remember an entire sequence of commands. Throughout the entire process, ROTC Sergeant Altop oversees all of the students' drill routines, making sure that our school is always the best of the best. Higley High School AFJRTC, their drill team is considered the best Air Force drill team in the state of Arizona. All right, and we've won a lot in the 12 years of this program. Now, competitions, what happens is they go from one activity to the next. So they will go from an inspection to a regulation, march a designated sequence, and then do an exhibition. Altop even hopes to continue ROTC's winning streaks from last year by bringing more trophies back to our school. We're always hoping to win. In fact, last year, we took second place at three out of the four drill meets that we attended last year, which is truly remarkable. With this goal in mind, the ROTC class is filled with students whose determination defines what Altop believes to be what the students need to be successful in not only the competitions, but also in their daily lives. If there's one thing that I'd probably emphasize the most, commitment. We want individuals who are committed to doing something better, to serving others first as opposed to oneself. Good luck to everyone who's heading off to their competition on December 1st. Remember, one team, one fight, one win. Coming from the studio, I'm Nadia Garsho. During this time of year, upperclassmen start to plan their futures. Around campus, there are a lot of different college representatives coming to talk about what they have to offer. Sign up for the next college visit in the counseling office. Mr. Nuttall's video production classes recently completed an action scene sound design project where students were required to add sound effects, dialogue, and music back into a silent Hollywood movie clip. Building a complete original sound design from scratch, take a look at the following clip submitted by sophomore Hayden Ashton. Keep in mind, everything you hear was produced by Hayden. Let me just say, if aliens wind up implanting eggs in my chest or something and I eat one of you, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear another pop culture reference out of you for the rest of the trip. I'm trying to say that something is coming.
Thanos! Carpool Karaoke, started by James Corden, is a famous YouTube series that everyone loves to watch. In each different video, a new guest is invited into the car for an interview and to sing some music. Grace and I did a twist on Carpool Karaoke and went out with Coach Wesley to do our own version of Golf Cart Karaoke. Just turn that way. It's just like a car. Turn that way. I feel like I'm teaching you how to drive. You don't have a license? I do. You don't have a license, Lisa. That's from the movie Weird Science. So what do you do on the football team? Uh, I uh, yell a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I coach the uh, defensive backs uh, for the Higley varsity football team. When you're coaching, it's, you know, you're trying to teach uh, young boys to become young men. So, you know, you have to be patient. They all have different personalities. So you have to be a chameleon about how you approach them all. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest difference between coaching boys and girls? Oh, man. Oh, you got an hour? <laughs> the biggest difference, uh, God, I would say emotional. Uh, you know, the emotions of the game. Um, I would say that would probably be one of the biggest differences. Uh, you know, I coach all boys and girls. I, I, I don't look at it, I look at them like athletes. I coach athletes. Michael Jackson, huh? <laughs> Oh boy. Nope. I'm not doing any Michael Jackson movies. Why? <laughs> hey! Peter! Oh, please don't show that. <laughs> oh, my poor Sydney. What's your favorite song? My favorite song? Or your favorite genre of music? Um, probably. Honestly, mm, either like alternative music or like rap. Just kind of yeah. basic. Mm. Yeah, but jazz and river dancing. River dancing? Oh my god. What kind of genre is that? I love <laughs> the river dance. <laughs> I'm All not right. a country music fan. Are you being serious? Country music is probably two thumbs down for me. I've just never been into it. Uh, to your ways to say, oh, I got friends in low places. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was golden. Oh, I feel like I'm in top gun. <laughs>